93, go ahead. That aircraft, you can't get a hold of. Has he turned to the east now? He just turned to the east also. United 93, you hear Cleveland Center. Okay, American 1060 and Executive 956, we just lost the target on that aircraft. Okay, 956, we had a visual on him, just stand by. Do you have a visual on him now? Uh, we did, but we lost him in the turn. So you can make a turn back to a 220 heading, let me know if you can see him. On September 11th, 2001, four planes were hijacked. Three of them hit their intended targets, and the fourth one, well, did not. United 93 was the last to be hijacked. Its passengers knew full well what was going on about the attacks in New York and Washington, and they knew they were next. So, in a last-ditch effort, there was a fight between the terrorists and passengers to retake the plane. The plane took a nosedive, and plummeted right into a field in Pennsylvania. The tragedy of that day and the scale of it was so much that just the simple crash of 93 is often not talked about except for the heroic act of the civilians on it. But it easily could have been far different. United 93 had a target. Each plane hijacked was intended to destroy a testament to American prestige, the largest towers in New York, the military headquarters of America, and another building left instead untouched. So what can be imagined is, what if in some alternate timeline United 93 wasn't overtaken? What if it actually reached and crashed into its intended target? How different would 9-11 be? Before I talk about how things could have been different, we need to talk about one thing. Something that determined the entire day. The flight schedule. The four planes chosen to be hijacked all had one thing in common. They all were to depart the airport around 8 a.m. The two planes that hit the Twin Towers, Flight 11 and 175, both departed from Logan International Airport in Boston. 11 took off at 8 with no delays on schedule. It was the first plane to be hijacked. United 175 had a slight delay and departed at 8.14. At the same time, Flight 11 went silent. Flight 77 was to depart from Duels, Virginia at 8.10, but there was a delay and it took off at 8.20. Flight 11, being the only plane on schedule, was the first to hit its target, the North Tower, at 8.46, followed by 175 into the South Tower at 9.03, and 77 into the Pentagon, roughly 40 minutes later, at 9.37. United Airlines Flight 93 was a different story. While the other planes had taken off and been hijacked, 93 was still stuck in Newark International Airport in New Jersey due to congestion. 93 didn't take off until 8.42, roughly the same time 11 hit the North Tower. Because of this delay, the plane wasn't hijacked until 9.28, 30 minutes after the South Tower was hit. The element of surprise was lost as news came about the other hijackings. The passengers and crew knew full well what the terrorists had in store, and took action. 93 never made it to its target and crashed into a field outside of Shanksville. So with that information, an ominous question arises. What if 93 departed on time like the others? In this alternate timeline, all the planes take off around the same time. 93 leaves Newark at 8 a.m. Flight 11 was hijacked in 14 minutes, 175 and 77 in 30 minutes but 93 was once again slower, being hijacked in roughly 45 minutes. 93 in this alternate timeline is hijacked in 45 minutes after takeoff as well, assuming it's just as slow. This would be around 8.45, the same time Flight 175 is hijacked, and right when 11 hits the North Tower. 93 then turns around as 77 is hijacked, and by the time the South Tower is hit, it is already over Pennsylvania. By 9.10, it has passed the field where it crashed in our timeline. Since Flight 93 is right on time, there is never a passenger revolt because nobody knows what's going on. And so, by 9.30, Flight 93 crashes into the Capitol building or the White House. Seven minutes later, 77 hits the Pentagon. Now, this is with the assumption that 93 will be hijacked just as slowly in our timeline. Nobody really knows why the hijackers waited so long, and since I couldn't find a reason, I'm going to assume that the plane hijacking will be in 45 minutes in this alternate timeline as well. 
Maybe they got cold feet. I don't know. Since there were two potential targets that 93 could have hit, I'm splitting the scenario in two. So here we go. The idea I had when researching this video was that even if these two structures were hit, the casualties would be low, considering the White House was evacuated right after the South Tower was hit. Well, that actually was only half true. The evacuation was really kind of half-assed when ordered at 9.20. It wasn't until the Pentagon was hit when the Secret Service agents started yelling for people to run out of the building. Even if 93 was slow to hijack by 45 minutes, it would have been the first plane to hit DC instead of Flight 77. The Secret Service would be on the lookout and have prior warning, but only by a few minutes. At 9.30, Flight 93 hits the White House as the delayed evacuation is taking place. Considering the small size of the building compared to a plane, it's destroyed in the blast. Most of the casualties are inside the building, but many are on the South Lawn. Despite the danger, many stayed to move tables away so that the president could land when he came back. If the plane had actually hit, then this would have been needless deaths. Cheney and other high-ranking executive politicians in the White House that day would have only a few minutes earlier evacuated to an underground bunker. It's not only a human tragedy, but the symbol of the American presidency is destroyed. Instead of talking to the American people from the Oval Office, George W. Bush instead does it from a makeshift office somewhere in D.C. Really, the context of the following war on terror is changed as Bush is the first president in centuries to not be serving in the building. The Capitol was not evacuated at all before the Pentagon was hit. In fact, it wasn't until Flight 77 hit Washington until DC even reacted at all. At 9.30 a.m., Flight 93 hits the U.S. Capitol building. The impact destroys the rotunda, which would be the easiest part to hit, and the dome of the building collapses. If the dome was to collapse, it'd destroy the center of the building, and this is where most of the casualties would be. By looking at the layout of the building, the two houses are on opposite ends. If the rotunda was to collapse, then the actual legislative part of the government might go unharmed. It's likely the majority of the casualties would be tourists, office workers in the center, and guides. While not as many would die in this attack, and the actual legislative hit wouldn't be drastic, the symbolism of the capital being destroyed would become the symbol of a new America. In terms of practical changes from either of these buildings being hit, legislation might be more radical. There is no story of American heroes sacrificing themselves to save others. Instead, there is just a nation left blindsided as its greatest monuments are destroyed. The White House or Capitol being destroyed could have been the most significant event of 9-11, it represent how different the United States truly was now. The government replaces those who are lost and stays the same, however the spirit of that government is drastically altered, even compared to our timeline. Just think of everything post 9-11 and imagine it more extreme. Imagine growing up and never seeing the US Capitol building. Instead, we do see the Capitol today. And the White House. They're still standing simply because an airport was delayed by 40 minutes.